Hello, everybody. Hello. Hello. Today we are talking about 10 things that you should be buying to save money at the grocery store to save thousands of dollars in 2024. Yes, it can still be done. People don't believe it can be done, but it can. Now, we are going to use our thumbnail picture first and show you guys. Look at this puppy here. Now, you can get boneless, skinless chicken breasts, organic boneless, skinless chicken breasts, a dollar or one and a half pounds. That makes it $10 a pound. $10 a pound for boneless, skinless chicken breasts. But if instead you would buy, <coughs> did you take it out of the lower third? If instead you would buy the chicken leg quarters, they, you could see them here. Why is this happening? Hmm. What? The lines right there. I guess it doesn't matter. Because it's, you got us on the side and that's the bottom of the screen. Oh. Uh, so like if we do this right here. We can change it, but okay. Um, okay, but you can see here, chicken leg quarters for $7.72 for 10 pounds. 10 pounds, guys. Now, that's 70 cents a pound for me, but a lot of my viewers have been telling me that they are getting these chicken leg quarters for 39 to 59 cents a pound. I had several people tell me that... Um, they have found these chicken leg quarters for 39 cents a pound. That doesn't even come close to being $10 a pound for organic chicken breasts. Now, this is one of those things, and I'm going to be doing a short video on this later because people have no idea how much money they are wasting on convenience foods. And Quite frankly, boneless, skinless chicken breasts are not any more convenient than drumsticks. It takes me the same five minutes to put boneless, skinless in the oven as it does to put drumsticks in the oven. It's no slower. So that is the first thing that you need to be buying is the chicken legs, chicken quarters, the thighs, the whole chicken even. Those are so much cheaper than buying boneless, skinless um, chicken breasts. Now, let's say you get boneless, skinless for $1.49, $1.49 a pound. Okay, that might be worth it. You know, by the time you take out the bones and everything, we have figured, I did a video on this, I'll do another one. But um, we took the chicken bones away from the chicken is that how I said took the chicken off the chicken bones and we weighed it and bones is about 50% of the weight. So when you're figuring these things and you're trying to figure if boneless skinless is as cheap or cheaper than the thighs or drumsticks, that's a huge one that people make an excuse. Well, it's so much cheaper to buy boneless skinless because I don't have the bones. No, it's not. So if you get 39 cents a pound for chicken leg quarters, it would be about 80 cents a pound, give or take. You can't, I've never seen boneless, skinless chicken breasts for 89 cents a pound or for 80 cents a pound ever in the entire 30 years that I've been doing this, ever. Not even in the 1990s. Well, there was a while where we ate nothing but chicken quarters yeah and tar was making the honey baked chicken and the maple glazed chicken and some of the other chicken recipes we haven't that thing with who was cool with the quarters volume one all those recipes in volume one doesn't it you it can, adds flavor i think well it does well the dark meat especially the dark meat is amazing but um the other thing I was thinking is it kind of helps you figure out your portions a little bit. Yeah, it does. Uh, Michael put the link back up there again. But guys, that's in our volume one, the honey baked maple glazed chicken. Dining on a Dime, really volume one. That is our number. Those are our two most popular recipes on our website, livingonadime.com. Because they're so easy. <laughs> they are so easy. Michael, make a note right now that after the show, we'll put the links in on our website. But 
Dion Dime Volume 1, 25% off for our New Year's sale, guys. Right now in the link is in the description below. Okay. Put the links in for what? Uh, the honey baked and the maple glaze. Oh, in the, in the description. Okay, yeah. Sure. Okay. So the next thing that we're going to have you buy here is instead of buying organic whole grain bread for $7.49. Nine cents for bread. Who in their ever loving mind spends seven dollars and forty nine cents on bread? I'm sorry, sorry, having a moment here. Seven dollars and forty nine cents. So instead of buying seven dollars and forty nine cent bread, what you need to get is just the regular Walmart bread that is. Whoops, what happened to my picture here? Um, hello? What's better? Something happened with my picture. I don't know. What do you mean? What? That's it right there. Yeah, it's not going to my next picture. Okay, the Walmart bread. Okay, Is something happened to my video. It looks like a still picture. Is it a still picture that's loaded? Okay, I don't know what's happening with our video here, but... Instead of buying, I should have transferred. Okay. Instead of buying the regular, or instead of buying the organic, whole grain, all of this craziness, just get your regular $1.39 a pound or $1.39 a loaf bread from Walmart or your grocery store. If it goes on sale for 99 cents at the grocery store, grab it then. But this paying $7.49 for your um for your bread is absolutely ridiculous you don't need to be making homemade bread or anything like that um oh have mercy i see what happened okay you don't need to be making homemade bread or anything like that but if you just get the regular uh blue loaf at walmart yes it has gone up significantly but if you, here it is, found it. Okay. But you don't have to be making your bread. But if you're not, and everybody says, oh, that white bread is just so bad for you. Listen, you're not eating an entire loaf of bread. You're having one or two pieces for breakfast and one or two pieces for your lunch. It's okay. It's okay. Now, I know bread has doubled since last year almost, not quite, 70% is what it's gone up here. It was 83 cents, I think, last year, and now it's $1.39, so whatever that is, 70% or so. It has gone up, but that is still very affordable bread. There's, there's nothing wrong with eating that. All right, the next one is instead of making your morning smoothies, which guys, you guys are putting kale and spinach and berries. One of these, now this is an orange and banana one because it's the one I happen to have a picture of, but what is that noise? Brandy. Oh, okay. You guys, the mail is going out today. So if you had orders, it's leaving right now. <laughs> um, but Instead of spending all this ridiculous amount of money on these smoothies, each of these smoothies could cost upwards of $5 each just for breakfast, depending on what you put in. If Some people are putting an avocado in there and they're putting kale and they're putting all these berries. Not only are they ridiculously high in calories, but it's super, super expensive. So what I would do instead is just get yourself a good old thing of oatmeal it does not take any longer to make oatmeal on the stove even you can make it in the microwave if you don't want to get the pan out for the stove which is fine but just make your own homemade instant oatmeal on my other youtube channel super easy recipes i'm going to be doing a video on how to make oatmeal in the microwave because it is so much cheaper and I saw the most ridiculous thing at the grocery store the other day. And I, I want to buy it for the show, 
but I cannot bring myself to buy this microwave oatmeal kit, literally 20 cents of oatmeal in there for almost $6. <laughs> Yeah. Almost six dollars. I just don't think people realize how much they're paying for convenience. I mean, you might as well hire a butler or a maid and a you cook. You could hire a butler for what some of these people. Are I spending. know those people could actually do the work for you, and it would be the same amount of cost as the convenience <sighs> that so many people pay. Oh for man, everything. it's crazy. Okay, before I get to the next one, guys, Happy New Year sale up to 50% off. Our print books are 35% off, volume one and volume two. Easy recipes to get you in and out of the kitchen quick. Our gluten free, dairy free edition right here. If you don't want to be eating sand, I've tested every one of these. I'm gluten free, dairy free. These are good recipes. And then our New Year's. Sale also includes our planners, 400 pages, 366 days to help you get organized because everybody's talking about organizing. I'm going to show how to use it in just a little bit, but our planners are 20% off right now. Okay, so let's go to the next one here. It is, okay, get ready, dear. Are you ready for it to be my commenter? Uh, no. Do guy. I'm not caught up yet. All right. It is margarine. Whoa. Okay. Do you think they can handle? Can they handle this? <laughs> all right. Every time I mention the word margarine, all the trolls come out and I just get, they just lose their, they absolutely lose their minds. $1.38 for margarine right there compared to Seven dollars, guys. A dollar thirty-eight versus seven dollars. Absolutely ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Okay, now I'm going to go on to my margarine rant here for just a moment, but I want you guys to type one if you are okay with eating margarine. Type two if margarine will never touch your mouth. You're really asking for trouble. <clears throat> <laughs> okay, guys, seriously, if you want to cut your grocery bill, you are not going to be able to just be eating whatever you want. Some of you are in hawk up to your eyeballs. You have so much debt that you can't even see straight. And you're spending hundreds, if not thousands of dollars on your grocery bill a month. This is one of the ways to cut it. Get rid of the margarine. Now, I'm going to go ahead and be the devil's advocate here. You said get rid of the margarine? Or I mean, get rid of the butter and eat the margarine. I'm going to get be the devil's advocate here and read a comment I got. I recently started watching Goshen P channel. I heard you say that about margarine before. Then GP Goshen says, it is plastic. You guys are friends, but differ greatly on the subjects. What to believe? My response to this person was... <laughs> You don't listen to either of us. You do the research for yourself like I have done for myself. This is not rocket science, people. It's not rocket science. Out of Goshen, it's Goshen prepping now, but they used to be out of Goshen. We are super good friends with Eric and Ashley. We love Eric and Ashley. They totally disagree with us on margarine. That's fine. I'm not going to lose my friendship over margarine. Are you kidding me? How petty are you if you're going to be that type of person? But I've done the research for myself. I've actually looked at the ingredients in margarine. It is oil. That's all it is. It's just whipped up oil. And personally, Eric can say whatever he wants. I don't really care. But personally, when I have looked up is margarine one molecule from plastic, I'm not finding that anywhere. It's kind of like saying that water, that hydrogen peroxide is one molecule, or that water is one molecule away from hydrogen peroxide. Well, it is. And if you drink a whole gallon of hydrogen peroxide, it'll probably kill you or at least make you really sick. But it's not. It's not water. 
just because it's close and made the same doesn't mean that it actually is. This is just well, basic chemistry. <clears throat> and that whole bit about being one atom away or whatever is complete rubbish. Like somebody, some YouTuber made that up. You know, the funny thing about the question that I was thinking is, they say, Goshen says that, we say this, who to believe? It sounds like it's a popularity contest and whoever wins a popularity contest is right. Well, the reality is facts are facts. Research. And, you know, I think it's fine if Eric likes to use butter. I mean, I like butter, but I don't think that there's any indication that margarine is a problem, except some YouTubers said it. And the thing is, YouTubers aren't scientists. <laughs> so... So it's not a popularity contest. It's a look at actual data and see what you think that that data is saying. So my whole point is stop just listening to everybody on the internet, including us. Do the research for yourself. We'll listen and then verify. Just like you do if you read the Bible. <laughs> just like you should do. Yes, exactly. Okay, the next thing is that you should buy in the grocery store is turkeys, hams, and other meats that stretch and but are very cheap. Turkeys were 59, 49, 39 cents a pound just a month ago. I have two more turkeys still in my freezer. Guys, one turkey that costs six to ten dollars can easily get you 30 to 40 meals. 30 to 40 meals easily. It's cheap, it's easy to cook. Our two ingredient turkey recipe, Dining on a Dime, volume one, livingonadime.com. Guys, testify if you have used our turkey recipe. It is the absolute best turkey recipe you will ever eat. It's two ingredients and literally takes five minutes to make, literally five minutes. And then when I pick all the turkey, when I the meat just falls off the bones, It takes me like 10 minutes to get the turkey carcass cleaned off, put into pre-portioned sizes for my family for the next several meals. And we've got turkey dinners in the freezer that I just pull out, throw in the oven, and I've got dinner ready. It is so stinking simple. It is easy. It is unbelievable. Kathy says, best turkey recipe ever. Another easy recipe. Love, it's easy to cook. Yes. Karen says it's easy to cook. The only way she will cook it now. It is so stinking simple. But guys, if you would buy turkeys or buy hams that are super cheap and that meat will stretch, that will help you get way more out of your grocery budget. And you can easily have dinners for two, three, four dollars easily. Next one. Frozen vegetables. I know this might be controversial also, but guys, sometimes you just can't afford fresh vegetables. Now we are very fortunate in that our groceries are still the cheapest in the entire world. So as Americans, we cannot be complaining about the price of groceries at all. It doesn't even compare. Some places in the world, 75% of their income goes to buying food because it is so super stinking expensive. It's ridiculous. We are so fortunate that we can easily get by with $80 to $100 per person per month and eat extremely well. That is not living on beans and rice. That is eating good, healthy food that your family loves. So fresh vegetables, are, in, are very plentiful here. But if it is cheaper to buy frozen, frozen vegetables are just as healthy as fresh vegetables. Just buy the frozen broccoli if it's cheaper. Buy the frozen green beans if it's cheaper. Buy the frozen beans if it's cheaper. That is another way to stretch your grocery bill. The next one is things like... Now, the, I can't believe I didn't have a picture of the... Um, French bread, but buying things on clearance, see how they have the markdown um, uh, baked goods here at my Walmart. But 
You can get French bread. You can get rolls. We had French dip last night for dinner. Wasn't it delicious? It was delicious. We had French dip for dinner last night. You can get French bread for 70 cents a loaf instead of $1.49. You can get the um, rolls for 12 of them for $2.50. They had marked down the other day at my Walmart. Go get the clearance food. It doesn't mean that it's bad. It just means that the store has to sell it and then you still have three to four or five days depending on the item that you can eat it fresh or you can take it home and throw it in your freezer and then pull it out later and eat it for something so buy your foods on clearance because that is a huge way to save money all right um next so, we, uh, sorry yeah? the butter margarine what was the one what was the two one was if you're okay with eating margarine, two is if uh, margarine will never touch your mouth. Because it looks like it's about 75% okay eating margarine, 25% margarine will never, 75% one, 25% two. But a lot of people say if butter is a good price, I'll get it because I like butter better. But I'm okay it, with But I'm fine it. with margarine. Yeah. And that's where we are. That's where we are. Yeah. And the reality is, it's funny because I went and looked. I mean, I've done so much looking on this. And actually, when we get to it, Karen, well, Karen, Karen Zedney, Jared has, she says, it's not related to plastic. The term plastic fat is simply a term that scientists use to describe the process it is made from, whipping oils and flavors to create it. We learned about how it was done in my medical training. Yeah. <clears throat> so she's, I think she's a nurse. So what I noticed is Mayo Clinic says, they think, well, the Mayo Clinic, says on their website that margarine is healthier <clears throat> and they're saying that for heart health. Some other people say, well, I don't know. I think maybe butter's healthier. And the reality is it appears that from the perspective of most doctors, that's kind of about the same. Yeah. Yeah. But some people, you know, just get really <laughs> bent out of shape one way or the other, mostly one way. <laughs> The next thing to buy is frozen pizza. You're going to be like, what, Tara? What in the heck are you talking about buying frozen pizza? Listen, I would rather have you buy a frozen pizza and have it on hand at home than to come home from work tired and exhausted and order pizza and spend $50 to $75 ordering pizza takeout or DoorDash. I would much rather you spend $4 on a frozen pizza and eat that with a bag of broccoli and right there, you've got $6 for dinner. $6 for dinner versus 50 to 75. Which one would you rather? Let me put it into another perspective. If you're working and you're making $20 an hour, that means for the $6 for homemade pizza and vegetables, you would spend about 20 to 30 minutes working versus 50 to $75, we'll say it will round up to 80 because that's what a lot of people are spending, guys. It's absolutely ridiculous. That means you're working five hours for a pizza that's only slightly better. Is that really worth working five hours for your dinner? You have to start putting this in true number perspective. And nobody is doing that. And you have to start putting it in perspective. Is it worth spending five hours working for dinner? Or 30 minutes. Now, if it's worth it for you to work five hours, that's fine. You go right ahead. But then don't complain that you hate your job and how much you hate your job. Because that's your choice. The next thing is eggs. Go buy eggs if you want to save money in 2024. You can save thousands of dollars. Listen, this goes back to the frozen pizza thing. I would rather have you buy some pancake mix and eggs and make breakfast for dinner in 10 minutes or 15 minutes, whipping up some pancakes and scrambled eggs and cutting up an apple or cutting up an orange or something like that for your dinner than spending a boatload of money eating out. Eggs are so versatile. 
You can fry them and have an egg sandwich for lunch. You can hard boil them and have an egg salad sandwich for lunch. You can eat them for breakfast, umpteen different ways, omelets, fried eggs, scrambled eggs, a frittata, all those different ways. You can do all those same meals for dinner. So you have a quick, easy dinner to get you in and out of the kitchen fast without spending a lot of time and money. And even when eggs were ridiculous last year at the beginning of the year, they were still way cheaper than eating out. I would have rather had, have had you buy a dozen eggs for $5 to feed your family two or three dinners, depending on how many people are in your family, of scrambled eggs and pancakes than to spend 50 to 75, $80 getting delivery pizza. Seriously, this is how you change your grocery budget and start getting your debt paid off so that you're not always so close to the edge and stressed out all the time. This is how you do it. All right, guys, while Mike's getting me the comments, our Dining on a Dime cookbooks, volume one and volume two right here. Quick and easy recipes to get you in and out of the kitchen. This is the one to start with. This is the companion just couldn't fit these recipes in this one. 1,200 recipes and tips in this one. 800 recipe tips, that one. And then we also have our gluten-free, dairy-free edition right here. Guys, our viewers absolutely love our cookbooks. If you love our cookbooks, let everybody know how much you love them, guys, because they will save your first trip to the grocery store. It is not just a cookbook. It has tips on how to save in everything. It has tips on how to get your kitchen and your house organized so that you're in and out of the kitchen quick and not wasting a lot of time and energy cooking ridiculous meals with shiitake mushrooms. This is real recipes for real families with real food that's real cheap. It is. You can do it. And then our undated planners, 400 pages, 366 days. You can see here, we have our cleaning lists on our planners to help you get organized. We have our monthly chores, our yearly chores, our weekly chores, and then our daily chores to help you guys get through. This is the system for you. I had someone today and let me see if I can find her. Here it is. Thank you so much for having the planner again this year. This is my fifth year using your planner, and it really is the best one out there. Wow. Thank you so much, Carolyn. <laughs> Oops, sorry, I left my video running too long there. Thank you, Carolyn, for that testimonial. Every person that has been getting it has just been raving and raving. So thank you so much. All right, Mike is going to, did you send me the nope. comments? Uh, hang on a second. I'll give it to you here. All right. And Jeanette sent me an email. When will the sale on the planners end? Our entire New Year's sale ends on Thursday. Is that right? Friday. Friday. Ends on Friday. However, there are only 143 planners left. Guys, if you want our planners, we only have 143 left. We are going through them. Um, so... Let me check the comments. Yeah, here they are. Okay. Can I show my mug, Judy, once? So this is my Phantom. The Phantom of the Opera is there. I can't go that Inside low. Inside your mind. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> so I got this when we were in London. Phantom is probably my favorite movie ever. Well, it was the... The big Probably. thing that she talked about the most when we were dating. I and loved Phantom. We yeah. went on our, was it our first anniversary we went to see yes. it in Denver? Yes, he took me to see it in Denver. And quite frankly, do I dare say this out loud, Denver was better than London. What? I don't know. I sure liked being at Her Majesty's Theater. No, Denver <laughs> was way better than London. Well, I mean, it was cool to go see it, but yeah, Jacqueline Denver was a bigger kind of spectacle and Her Majesty's Theater is a fairly small theater. So 
It was really cool though because the yeah. theater is like 150 years. Yeah. Years old. Jacqueline says, do the planners come in ebook version? Yes, the planners come in ebook version. So you can print them out yourself, and that is 50% off right now. Next, edifying. On a lighter note, we what are some uses for an immersion blender other than mayonnaise smoothies? Decluttering my kitchen, trying to decide if I should keep it. So I use my immersion blender all the time. So uh, mayonnaise, smoothies, gravies mashed potatoes sometimes when they're thin mashed potatoes and i wanted to just really get all the lumps out i've done that um i use it for soap making i use it for milkshakes i use it for chopping up berries um what else i'm trying to think it's kind of hard off the top of my head but those are a few of the things that i use it now if you don't use it then don't keep it and what you can do for something like that is put this stuff in a box, label the date six months from today. And if you haven't used it in six months, then throw it away. But here I will say, I do have some things like a meat slicer that I have that I literally use every five years. But when I need it, I need it. And so I do have a few kitchen appliances that I don't use all the time, but I keep because I know that when I find ham for 30 cents a pound, like I did one time and I need to cut it all up, I was so happy I had that meat slicer that I had found at a garage sale. It was like a $150 meat slicer and I got it for, I think a two or $3 at a garage sale. So I just keep it in the back of my pantry and use it then. Yeah, Kathy says she uses it to make soups. I use it for soups too a lot because I like, I'm not quite sure what's wrong with me, but I'm having a hard time eating now and I'm choking on food really bad. And so I've been grinding up a lot of things like my fruits and vegetables and stuff like that. And so um, I use it for making soup also. And Megan says for butter and whipped cream, yes, it's good for that also. Um. <clears throat> Jill makes peanut butter with hers and Cindy may has heard soap making. Yeah, I use it for my soap making, but I mean, that's a very specialized hobby. So, or business. Wow. Everybody is getting snow, snow, snow guys. I hope you stay warm and you don't have the power out for too long. Cindy, I've cleared out eight large trash bags of clutter. Yeah. You go girl. She has four more to go and she'll be done. That is great. She's been doing it while she listens to this channel. Thank you. That is so <laughs> nice of you guys. Thank you. Thank you. And Julie's whoop, whoop. I get to get a live. Yes. We, when we've discovered, when, <laughs> listen, I'm just going to be straight up with you. We discovered when we have sales, if we go live, we sell more books. But it's kind of cool. 35% off right now. <laughs> <laughs> but it so, is, but, but it's also kind of a cool way to have a special like couple of weeks of more yeah. shows for a while. But we just can't do, we don't have the energy to do that all the time. Like We, we had thought about dumping all the regular shows and just doing lives. We had thought about that. But I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. So, ooh, Julie's saying, getting much needed rain in South Central Kansas. I know. I used to live in Wichita. My brother's still there. So I get it. Holy cow. Megan's donated 6,500 books this year. How many books did you have, girlfriend? That is a huge amount of books. Wow. Okay, we were never complaining about our book stash again. <laughs> wow. Um, I think I have about 25 books. Yeah. Well, I have more than that, but I read them all the time. Tracy lives in Massachusetts. They got 12 inches of snow yesterday. Wow. Katie, we made the chicken and dumplings recipe from Dining on Dime Volume 1 and loved it. Even gave some to our elderly Nabel, and he was thrilled. It was perfect for the cold and snow. Good. I'm so glad. Jay Moore says, cheapest I found is $7.99 for the Lake Quarters. Yeah, here in Wyoming, I have the lowest I have seen, I think, is $0.49 cents a pound one time. So, yeah. Vicky says she can't imagine spending $10 a pound for chicken. That's ridiculous. I know, isn't it? It's crazy. Pe Peggy, I just bought 20 pounds of chicken leg quarters at Walmart. Good job. B. Ogden, two weeks ago, I bought 80, 20 ground beef for $1.39 pound, bought 50 pounds. Very good. Margo says the maple glazed chicken from volume one and on our website, livingonadime.com. You can find the recipe is the bomb. Thank you very <laughs> much. 
EP says four pounds of boneless, skinless chicken thighs was 831. Good. And Karen made our banana bread recipe, volume one. And if you want, volume two has the same banana bread recipe. There's only two repeat recipes because I added variations. So I think there's like 14 banana bread re variation recipes in volume two. two. But we literally could not add one more page to this book. So I had to put it in volume two when we came out with the new edition. So that's what I did. The muffin and the banana bread are the only two repeat recipes. But even then, the, even then they're not repeat. They're just variations. Ugly says my, um, Ugly Jess says my local Aldi has bread for 50 cents a loaf. Very good. Wow. Yeah, we don't have Aldi out here in the, in the, in the old west. We don't have. <laughs> We don't have Aldi. Yep. Ella Ellen says, I'm going to keep getting my loaf of chocolate chip brioche from Aldi for $1.99 to enjoy my breakfast. That is great. That is not a bad deal. I would do that. Donna, she ordered volume one yesterday. She collects cookbooks and don't have a cookbook with frugal cooking recipes. I'm looking forward to receiving it. Yay. It literally just left five minutes ago. We heard the mail lady coming. So, <laughs> yep. We love our mail lady. Yep, she's pretty awesome. Vicky says she makes cream of wheat yummy. Yes, that is one thing that I really miss. And I couldn't find a recipe. Now, I use, I have a recipe for a um, millet in here, which is actually pretty darn tootin' good. But you have to cook it a while. And so um, I do miss making cream of wheat. I absolutely love cream of wheat. But the millet, if you let it cook long enough so it's super soft, has a similar texture. And I really like that, too. Heather, do you think Amazon Prime is worth it for the average person? I don't know how much you order from them. So, I mean, it just depends on how much you order. You know, so I just, don't even know how much it costs now, but... It's like $100 <clears> and something. If we didn't have the business, I still think we order enough stuff that we would probably do it. Probably. Although, for Especially us... Especially being here in, in Wyoming. Well, for us, I'd be curious to see what the shipping takes because it takes a week for Amazon to get stuff to us here in Wyoming. As a matter of fact, I started ordering off of Walmart before Amazon now, because Walmart will get here in three days and Amazon takes a week. So yeah, Jill, what? You put oatmeal in a bowl, add water, and microwave. What is the microwave kit? So the microwave kit is, um, it's this, I don't know. Let me see if I can find it here. Um, uh let's see if i could show it here if they have it it's the most ridiculous thing i've ever seen i'm just i was just i saw it at the grocery store and i'm like i need to spend six dollars on this to show people how ridiculous this is but i can't bring myself to pay six dollars for this because <laughs> it's so ridiculous even for research even for research um it's funny because even even when we buy things for research, we oh. usually try to buy in the same way we do when we buy groceries, the actual saving money way. I, I just like, I could not bring myself to buy the $10 a pound chicken because it was so ridiculously expensive. Well, now I can't find it. I, I saw it on the shelf at my Walmart, but I don't know what they, oh, here it is. Oh, here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Uh, let's see. How do I? Um, oh, shoot. Uh, okay, here, I'll kind of, I'll kind of show you. I, I mean, I don't know. I just, I'm just shaking my head because I'm just like, you've got to be kidding me. Uh, here. Okay. So here, can you see over here on the side? All it is is oatmeal and your brown sugar, and you put it in this little cup. But look at this, $5.26 for a quarter's worth of oatmeal. That's just crazy. Who in the right mind buys this stuff? Now, I, I can't even see if you're living in a hotel doing this. Well, I honestly, I think that there are a lot of people that just haven't made that stuff before, and they just don't know that you can make it. I guess. Because I noticed a lot of the younger people I know who are like 
20 to 25. Somebody didn't teach them how to do a lot of that stuff. And they don't know that it's not a big complicated process, like to make oatmeal. I mean, oatmeal, I, I just put some water in a pot and put some oatmeal and I don't even measure it. Yeah. If it looks a little too thin, I shake a little more in. <laughs> and if it gets too thick, yeah. then I add a little more water. Uh, Mandy says, got volume one for my son for Christmas, who will be moving out in August for college. Gave my mom the gluten-free one. She is super excited. This is one right here to start trying the recipes. Yes, try the cinnamon roll muffins. If you miss cinnamon rolls, they're not cinnamon rolls, but the cinnamon rolls muffins. They taste just like a cinnamon roll without all the pain in the patootie, gluten-free cinnamon roll making mess. Yeah. Vicki, I had an egg sandwich this morning at 1030. It kept me full till three. Yeah, that's what I do every morning. Francis, I usually have cold cereal with a banana. Yep, that's what Jack does every morning for cereal. Mike does a lot of the time too. Gwen, I prefer butter. If I have no money, margarine would be in my fridge. Yep. Jennifer, she buys a lot of butter, but just when it's on sale. Yes, Jennifer, my girl, you do. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I was looking at my butter stash and it's getting down because butter did not go on sale here for Thanksgiving and Christmas. So I'm getting a little nervous that my butter stash is going down. I don't know, guys. Type one, if butter is still going on sale for you. Type two, if you haven't seen butter on sale for a while, because I'm curious if we're the only ones. Um, man, Kansas must be getting a lot of rain because everybody's commenting about it. That's funny. Oh, Kansas, Kansas. Um, <laughs> how many of you guys remember that commercial? There's a feeling in the air that you can't get anywhere except in Kansas. You have to have <laughs> been around Kansas for a long time because when we lived there, they never did. Uh -uh, they never. And had I was on television, so you think I would have come oh, across it? Oh, it was when it. I was growing up. And who remembers Toy, Toy Boy, Boy and Santa? I knew Toy Boy was going to come up. I love Toy Boy. <laughs> he he was my love. Okay, um, <clears throat> Mickey says, my mom always said Imperial is better over butter. She was the best baker ever. Really? That's interesting. Diana, is Blue Bonnet bet better than Imperial? I always buy Imperial. Actually, I buy butter near the holidays when it's the cheapest sale, like Tara said, teaches, and then uses way less. Yes. Um, I don't know if one is better than the other. I haven't really paid attention. Maybe I should do a video testing them. Now that we're not sticking to one thing anymore, I have so many video ideas going through my head. I'm like, I could make a video every day and not run out of ideas. I know I have a problem. No, no, it's fine. But that's the kind of stuff I'm interested in is making chocolate chip cookies or whatever, or brownies or whatever, one with Imperial and one with Blue Bonnet and to see which one would be better. Yep. I think that would be cool. Then it depends on the size of your turkey, but if you have a pound of turkey, you can feed five three-ounce servings per pound. There you go. Thank you. Shelled up frozen vegetables. Next ones, please. Are all I use, I live alone and can make a seasonal serving? Yes. Susan, cost is important. Can't afford butter all the time. Yes. Kelly, this morning I found a big package of Italian sausage on clearance. Baby back ribs, 50% off. I got seven pounds of meat for $15 and I will get tons of meals out of these. Very good. Laura, for those who insist on smoothies, wouldn't using frozen spinach work instead of kale? Yes, it would. I always wondered about why they use mm -hmm. kale because kale tastes so nasty. It's supposed <laughs> to be healthy for you. Is it more healthy than spinach? I don't think so. I don't know. I, I know Popeye, what he, what he would say. <laughs> Um, Joanne says dish soap is close to $5. I know I am doing a dish soap comparison. You know, that new Dawn power spray stuff that's ridiculously expensive and has 25 cents of ingredients in it. I'm comparing that to regular soap to see if it's going to be good. Melissa, yay. It's Tara rant time two days early. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, Vicki. I always buy whatever is cheapest when it comes to butter. I can't even tell the difference. Yeah, I can tell the difference in the taste. Like on my toast, I like the taste of butter. Well, yeah, I the use taste ghee. of butter is definitely. I use ghee because I'm dairy free, but I like the taste of butter over margarine. But I'll tell you until, let's see, when was it? Until 2019, I, 95% of my spread for toast 
up until that point for the first 25 years we were married was margarine because we just couldn't afford it. We just couldn't afford it. And so, even when we started getting butter, we were like, hmm, because the kids would get like a like a giant tablespoon mm -hmm. and scoop it yeah. in. Just we were like, Oh, Rochelle's. That was Channel 3 that did the Ah Kansas commercial. See, you know what I'm talking about. She knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> It's so funny because it used to go, there's a feeling in the air that you can't get anywhere except in Kansas. And no matter where I go, there's people that I know in Kansas working hard for what we do. Our dreams are coming true in Kansas. And you're just sitting there thinking, it's Kansas people. Really, it's Kansas. <laughs> I just think it was funny that when I was <laughs> still in television there, the state came up with the Kansas, it's bigger than you think. I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I grew up in Kansas. I actually love Kansas, believe it or not. I just don't like the weather. The people are really nice. I don't even have a problem with the scenery, to be honest. But the weather stinks. And Kansas needs to stop trying to promote the state as tourism. <laughs> they need to get rid of their tourism bu budget and just bring in work budget, you know, manufacturing, whatever. <laughs> well, you know what's funny is I think tourism would be okay if it was old west tourism, but yeah. it's not old west tourism that they want to do. Yeah. But it's kind of like Wyoming. If you're gonna have tourism in Wyoming, well, I mean, I guess Yellowstone is here, so there's that. But old west tourism, man, it's like it's still the old west here. So. <laughs> All right, next uh, one here. I think he says people justify wasting a bunch of money to spend on so-called healthy food. Yeah. I know one person, they ate organic because it was going to give them cancer if they didn't for like 20, like 30, no, like 30 years. What did they die of? Cancer. So, you know, Tina, I eat better, but I use other methods to save, um, save like saving my bacon grease. There you go. Susan, she loves our turkey recipe. So does Kathy and Oh My Lanta and Jackaroulane. Linda says the moistest turkey ever. Thank you guys. Volume one or livingonadime.com. Also, if you search on our YouTube channel, you can find the turkey recipe there. Julie, Walmart here in Arc City had 25 cents a pound right after Thanksgiving. Wow. Man, we got a lot of Kansas people on tonight. Where are y'all coming from? This is great. Mary Jane, does it cook? The same in baking. Margarine? No, it is slightly different than butter. Butter will make your foods more crispy because butter, the milk proteins in butter get brown and they they brown your food more. Eva, I believe that frozen vegetables are better because they are picked when they are ripe. Yes, she personally thinks they taste better, especially here in Wyoming. I would never buy fresh green beans this time of year. I'll buy cabbage and potatoes and carrots and broccoli's okay. But even like the sugar snap peas, none of those are really that great here. Linda, my niece was going to throw out a frozen ham because it was in her freezer more than six months. Oh my goodness. Did you stop her? Oh, she gave it to them instead. It made a great Christmas dinner. <laughs> my goodness. <laughs> That is great. Eva, do you recommend shopping weekly, bi-weekly, or what? I recommend doing whatever works for you. When we lived in Idaho, I went once a month because it was 70 miles each way to the grocery store, and I wasn't going to waste gas at $1.25 a gallon to drive 70 miles to go get groceries when we were making $6 an hour, when Mike was making $6 an hour. I wasn't going to do it. Now... We go to the grocery store two or three times a week to pick up one or two things. So like Michael run out of his coconut coffee creamer and he'll stop in. But it's like when we're on the way to somewhere else, like coming home from church, we'll stop in and get something. Anytime I over that side of town, I say, hey, I'm going to be over near Walmart. Yeah. Do you need anything? So we'll maybe run in and get one or two things. But I haven't done a big grocery shopping haul Wow, how long has it been? It's been a really long time. I went and got meat this week, but that was only four bags worth. I don't know, because we've been, excuse me, eating out of our pantry. And I need to go do a pantry stockpile. I do need to go restock up. 
but whatever works for you. If weekly works for you, then go weekly. Twice a month, go. But it's just, you get a system for you that works and just do that. <laughs> Bounty in the Badlands, everything in moderation, it's usually just fine. Yes, 100%. Ron and Ann, love you guys doing what you do. Thank you. Always be kind, says I get pizza at Little Caesars for $5.50. Holy moly, that's great. What is it here? It's like $7.99 or something for Little Caesars now. Yeah, Have you driven by hot, lately? Um, I can't remember. Seems like, did we get it or one of the school got it or something? And it was like, I think $7.99 wow. for the hot and ready ones. Wow. It used to be $5. Julie says, on sale tortillas and lunch meat and cheese roll-ups on a tray for 20 bucks. Seriously? I know. It's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. Linda, I shop weekly for the weekly sales to stock my pantry. Only buy what's on sale. Good job. She never pays, pays full price for anything. You go, girl. Okay. Seaside says Costco has, Costco has a three-pack of cauliflower crust pizza for a good price. Our go-to when time is short. There you go. Kim, after eating out, quality of food is decreasing daily. We are at the point we would rather eat at home. I know. We have one Mexican restaurant we really, really love here and a Chinese restaurant we really, really love here because the food is actually good quality food. And when we go out of town or whatever and we go out to eat, even to McDonald's or Wendy's or whatever, we're like, seriously, we just paid $10 for this? I mean, it's gross. She go to King's first and get the TV dinner and just throw it in the microwave. I know. Craft Day says, I just had fresh fried eggs and toast for dinner straight out of the hen house. Ooh, there you go. Joyce, I made your heavy cream recipe and used it to make quiche for lunch this week. So tasty. That is great. I think we have quiche. I can't remember if it's volume one or volume two. <laughs> I don't remember which one it is. But... Our cookbooks are on sale right now, 35% off, guys. Also, our planners to help you get started for the New Year's, 400 pages, 366 days, undated, so you can start now and not lose any pages. Helps you get organized and stay organized. Ooh, Carissa, thank you so much for that super chat. Yes, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Um, Lauren, egg drop soup is cheap and easy. Yes, it is. Volume one, dining on a dime cookbook. Donna, we have fried potatoes in grease, in bacon grease and whipped eggs. Yes, fried potatoes. We have two different versions in each book. Cook until eggs are cooked and scrambled with potatoes. Yum. Very good. Kimberly, it's okay to cook and then portion it out. Yes, that's exactly what we do. Shelda, she pushed us all three cookbooks, best investment she's ever made. They pay for themselves. And she also got the digital planner. Yes, our planner does come in digital form also. So you can just print off which pages you want. Thank you for that testimonial. Vicki, she saw Phantom of the Opera at the Fox Theater in Atlanta. It was awesome. Yeah. Oh, I loved it. It was great. If it comes back to Denver ever, we may have to go down and see it. Let's see. In Denver, we saw it. In, so it was 25 years later when we saw it in London. Yeah. So, yeah, that was pretty cool because it was our, was it our 25th anniversary, 25th anniversary that year? Yeah. Wow, was it that long ago that we were? Yes. I know. It's time. hard to believe, isn't it? Kelly says, um, oh, let's see, got that one. Um, and Julia says she has all three cookbooks and loves them. All very quick, easy recipes. Very nice. Love them so much. Recommend them to anyone and everyone. Thank you. Guys, thank you so much. Almost every day we have someone emailing us or sending us a letter or something telling us that you guys are recommending us. Thank you so much. It is through your word of mouth that we sell our cookbooks and we really appreciate you guys giving testimonials on how great they are. Thank you so much. So when I die, you can put them on eBay, eBay and make a ton of money. <laughs> there you go. Right? Mm -hmm. Elizabeth made our peachy pork chops and they came out great. Oh, that's one of my favorites. I'm going to have to make that for super easy recipes. That is really that's good. That's one of my favorite recipes. You know what's funny about that is I never really have been very fond of pork chops, but that recipe mm -hmm. is what Tara used to get me started eating them. Yeah. Um, can you put super easy recipes, my cooking channel guys, on there? 
Um, our channel is doing very well. We are getting like 100 new subscribers a day, which is really good for small channels. So thank you so much, you guys. Appreciate it. Yes, I'll put that in. Kyra is a single person who is responsible for myself and a parrot. Oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I was not expecting that. You, I showed you his picture the other day. <laughs> I know, but I just, sorry. <laughs> uh, I just don't cook for myself. Yes. Fully eats better than me. I guess that's the carrot. That's the parrot, not the carrot. Sorry. It's the same Fully. meals day after day. No bread or sweets, but lots of eggs and cheese. And neighbor delivers fresh, fresh eggs when she has extras. Otherwise, I buy from the store. I'm lacking protein in my diet. Too little calories to lose weight, especially since I work out. It's a struggle. Yes. Girl, make yourself a nice big cheesecake <laughs> <laughs> and have a cheesecake. Dining on a Dime, Volume 2. We have a really, really super good baked cheesecake and chocolate cheesecake. And Dining on a Dime, Volume 1, we have a no-bake cheesecake. Just make yourself a good cheesecake. <laughs> oh, man, I wish I had that problem. Big, and I know it's a problem. I'm not saying... Sorry. Every time I say something like that, I just am struggling getting my weight off. And so it would be nice to just be able to eat a cheesecake. You know what I mean? So anyway, Mickey, get up early, go to the grocery store. I go in a store just open about around one hour to Kroger. They mark down early so you can save money on meat. Yes. So if somebody mm -hmm. is single and makes a cheesecake, you can, they can it. slice it into pieces mm -hmm. and then freeze each piece separately. Yeah. So you want when you just pull it out yeah. and let it defrost for a half hour, 45 minutes? Yes, and it would be so good. Okay, so before I knew I had a dairy problem, that's exactly what I did. I'm the only one who eats cheesecake in my family. And so what I would do is make a cheesecake and I would cut it up and I would just eat one piece every day or two. Donise loves her cookbook and her planner. Thank you so much. Ashley, agree eating out costs quadruple of what it costs to make delicious foods at home. I know, I'm doing a video on that. So, dear, we may have to go to the restaurant to do a comparison which for them. Eating out versus cooking it at home. Which restaurant? I don't know. Which one should we do? So do we test the Chinese food recipes in here or the Mexican food recipes in here or the fajita recipes in here versus the rest? I, maybe we should do all three. I, know, I think but, we'll have to sacrifice. But, but we go to the Mexican place because our friends are there. <laughs> oh, it's funny. It's, it's like cheers. Everybody knows your name. <laughs> <laughs> Do they know our name? I don't know if they know our names. I don't know names. if they know our names. We know all their names. Yeah, that's funny. But they know us. Yes, they know us. <laughs> Ashley, uh, or Shelda, I use I used to scramble two small eggs every morning. Now I buy extra large ones and only use one. There you go. Very good. See which one is cheaper. Do the math, guys. It might be cheaper. How long do eggs last in the fridge? Denise wants to Denise wants to know. I don't know. I have never thrown away eggs. Even if they're past the expiration date, two or three weeks, I use have used them. I don't know what to tell you because, well, and I've had some a month past the expiration date that I've used. I maybe shouldn't have. But I'm kind of thinking if you're baking them, your temperature's getting up high enough. You only need 165 degrees to kill bacteria. So I don't know. I don't know if, if I would use them that long, but I have. Cheryl says, eating in restaurants is stressful and unhealthy for your body and wallet. Well, not if you do it in moderation. Definitely for your wallet and your body if you do it all the time. Stressful, yes, it can be very well, stressful. Well, that's the thing that's funny is people go there because they say it's easier. But, man, I've seen so many people that they're just angry at their kids and things don't seem to be going right. I'm thinking, just do it at home. Yeah. Diana says, use Living on a Dime Volume 1 pizza crust. You can freeze the dough and put it in the fridge the night before and have delicious homemade pizza in less than 10 minutes. Yes, I'm doing a video on that, too. I'm telling you guys I have all these videos planned out now that I'm back working today. <laughs> um, Catherine, I'm actually making hard-boiled eggs for tomorrow. Yes, and if you need deviled eggs, Dining on a Dime Volume 1, super easy. Um, also, to use hard-boiled eggs, we have... Um, egg salad and golden morning sunshine mom loves that recipe i don't i don't like that one as much because i don't like white gravy but mom loves the golden morning sunshine 
Ashlands, Americans are very spoiled. I lived in Indonesia for years and it cost so much for food. The poor could only eat ramen and rice. Very poor diets. We all need to count our blessings. Okay, don't even get me started on this. But you got me started on this, so I'm going to say it. <laughs> so today I was watching this thing on the migrant crisis here in America. And it was talking about how this little town in the mountains in Colorado just is getting inundated with immigrants. And they can't take care of them and they don't know what to do. And they interviewed the immigrant and then they interviewed the mayor of the town. And the mayor is like, we, would, we don't mind trying to help these people, but we do not have the resources to help them. But what was interesting was the immigrant was saying how there was five people, five, living and sleeping out of one little car, just a regular car, no minivan, nothing, just a regular car, five people. So all their stuff, everything living in this one car. And you know what he said? He said, even though we're living in our car, it's a thousand times better than what we came from. <laughs> I don't agree with this migrant crisis and and our government just letting people flood our country. I don't agree with that at all. But I also do not blame these people. If I was in that situation, you better darn toot and well believe I would be taking advantage of it if I could better myself that way. It's a thousand times better living in your car in the mountains in the the dead of winter in January than what they came from. Americans have got to just stop being such spoiled brats. Well, I also think about we know people in the Philippines and in India too, and it's the same thing for them. Oh, yeah, we support a church in Phil in the Philippines, and we send them money for their building, and then send them money to give Christmas presents and stuff, and. You should see how far the money goes to help them and how absolutely grateful these kids are to be able to eat through their feeding program and get little Christmas gifts from the church. And this church is able to spread the gospel by being able to feed these people. And we're sitting, I'm calming myself down so I don't have a stroke. And we're sitting here complaining about the price of groceries. I was thinking more about the distinctions between different kinds of food. Because people like practically have a stroke over whether somebody else is eating a food that they don't agree with. <laughs> like some places they're just happy to have food. It makes me so angry. Yes, food has gone up. My grocery store food has almost doubled since last year. I know I kept telling you guys for years, food inflation wasn't going up. It, was, it wasn't, but now it has, and it's almost doubled, probably 40% of what it was last year. But it's still, still is way cheaper than the majority of the world. And yet people can't afford food because they're paying for their iPhones. They're paying their car payments. They're getting their nails done. They're getting their hair done. They're going out to eat. Mm. Someday I'm going to have a stroke on a live on the show. So you just make sure it goes viral for whatever you need it to do. Okay. <laughs> Grace. She uses lake quarters for many things. They're economical and she prefers them to breasts anyway. Yeah. We like the taste of them. Um, much better. Betty, she loves listening to us all. Thank you. Debbie, our cookbooks are spectacular. Excuse me, fantastic recipes and tips. Thank you so much. And the books are gorgeous. Yeah. Guys, we have not every, the books are so big, we could not put a picture for every recipe, but we have full color pictures in the book for a lot of the recipes. And it lays flat. So this is a brand new book, guys, just so you know. And it lays flat even at the front and the back of the book. See, lays flat. I have not pushed it down or nothing. It's just the way the binding is made. We pay extra so that you can have a lay flat book. Claire loves the cookbooks. Amy loves them. Connie loves them. 
Thank you, Connie. I have your business card. So if we come out there, we'll give you a call and see if we can meet up. Leah, we have all the books and bought two of the gluten-free, which is the green one, guys, for gifts. Yes, all of these recipes in here have been tested and they are delicious. I don't put no food that tastes like sand in my cookbook. <laughs> <laughs> Cat, she has her too. She loves it. Nancy says she loves the pizza crust with flour and yogurt. It is so quick. Yep, that is volume two, our two ingredient um, pizza dough recipe right there. Elizabeth, I've cooked forever and love the simple approach to these recipes. Thank you. It is so simple, guys. Super easy recipes is my cooking channel. Um, go check out my newest video, 20 chicken recipes. Um, that video did exceptionally well. It just came out Saturday, but, and don't flip out. People are flipping out. Last year when we didn't have a kitchen, I hired some people to do videos for me so we could keep the channel going. So yes, some of the hands are not mine in there. I don't have a tattoo. What? You're, you're having fake hands. People are, <laughs> people are accusing me of stealing other people's content. No, it's my content. I hired someone to make the videos. People do it all the time. It is funny though that people will notice that. That's because you have such amazing hands, honey. Thank you. Mm. Ooh, la la. <laughs> <laughs> um, Pat, are only eBooks on sale? No, the print books are 35% off also. Um, Heather, do you think potatoes and sweet potatoes yams are considered an affordable food year round? Yes, I do. Colleen, my goodness, all my stores are crazy due to the winter storm tomorrow. I know, this is why you have a stockpile. This is why you have a stockpile. So whenever there's a storm, guess who's not at the store? I have never, ever, ever gone shopping, panic shopping at the store before a storm, ever. The only panic shopping I ever did was when that thing going around hit in 2020. We had been trying to move, so I let my stockpile get really low. And the day they made the announcement they were going to start shutting everything down, my buttocks... They made the announcement that evening. My buttocks were at the grocery store at 8 a.m. the next morning. And I got $1,000 worth of groceries in case the fecal matter hit the oscillation unit. <laughs> but other than that, I have never panic shopped at a grocery store ever. We have lived in Colorado, Kansas, Wyoming. I don't go to the grocery store before a storm. Seaside says I never understood why people do that. Because <laughs> like, they don't have any food on hand. <clears throat> Seaside says the original cookbook has lots of useful information, not just recipes. She got one for her daughter when she moves out on her own. Very good. Thank you. Yes, and so does volume two. It's not as thick, but it is still has 800 recipes and tips to help you save money. Lisa says, did you go buy a Stanley Cup at Target? No, I refuse to shop at Target. I will not give Target one penny of my money. Susan B., love the music of the Phantom of the Opera. Yep. Uh, somebody else made a comment, though. I think that there must have been some kind of riot over oh, people ridiculous. wanting to buy Oh, it's ridiculous. They're having to have police guard. You know that cup Dave has? Yes. So they came out with a Valentine's special, pink and some maroonish red color. They're really pretty. I, I personally, if I needed one of those cups, I would pick that color. It's very, very pretty. People were fighting in line to get these cups. <laughs> so some stores had to hire security to stand around the cups. Oh, welcome to America. <laughs> and you're sitting here complaining about your grocery bill? Seriously, people. Oh, you did that so good. Thank I you. Did. <laughs> I, yeah, I have not been to Target in eight years since whenever they allowed mentally ill men to go into the women's restroom with women and children. I have not stepped foot in that store and I won't do it. But anyway, I just think it's crazy. 
All right. Olympia made the cappuccino mix. It rocks. Everyone was asking what was in my mug. It's good, isn't it? Yes. That one is delicious. Lisa, it's also livingonadime.com. Type in coffee recipes and that will come up. Lisa, I made the Amish breakfast casserole and now her husband is addicted to it. Thank you. Donna, you might need to have your esophagus stretched. When I was talking about how I'm choking eating food all the time. Yeah. And I asked the doctor about it like four or five years ago and they wouldn't do it. So he said, no, yours is big enough. I'm like, I'm choking all the time. He said, nope, it's big enough. You don't need to. But the reason why I knew that's what I need to have done is because my grandma and my mom and my great grandma all have the same problem. And when my grandma had to have a scope put down to check something for her stomach or whatever, they had stretched it and she didn't choke after that anymore. So I know that's what needs to be done, but um, I don't know if I can get anybody. I noticed... It's gotten worse since I put on that extra 10 pounds when I tried the keto diet last year. Or no, not keto, carnivore diet last oh, year. Oh, carnivore. Ugh. So I noticed it's gotten worse, so I've been trying to get that off, which it's not coming off. But hair tight. It's freezing cold here in Vegas, 46 degrees. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, that's cold. Uh, <laughs> it's supposed to be negative 25 here. Did three, four days. So, <laughs> um, we're giving prayers of Thanksgiving for a warm house. <laughs> yes. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Nancy spent three days decluttering, going through all her paper files while she watches us. Good job. And she loves her recipes. Good job. You go, Nancy. Seaside says being gluten-free. She loves this. Oh, I was just talking about that. She loves our cinnamon roll muffin recipe right here. Good with my chili on a cold day. Yes. Both of those are in the gluten-free cookbook. Um, let's see. How many grocery stores do you recommend going to things on sale? Heather wants to know. I don't go to more than three. So when I lived in Kansas, it was Walmart, which I hardly ever went to because it's super expensive, but it was Kroger and Aldi. So it was mostly Kroger and Aldi that I went to. In Colorado, it was Kroger, save a lot. And once again, Walmart, but ex very rarely. I mean, I hardly ever went, got groceries at Walmart because it was super expensive. Now, in this town, we have Ridley's, which is a family grocery store, Albertsons, and Walmart. Well, here, Walmart is cheaper than most things. But if I go to the big city, I get stuff at Kroger if we have room in the car to stock up because it's cheaper. Mike um, has different rules for shopping. <laughs> I don't go to places where there's too many too many rules to get a sale price. If yeah. you have to go and get three of one thing and four of another thing and 12 of another thing all together in order to get the sale price, I don't do it. If you have to do that, some of our stores here do the digital coupons and they almost never work. Yeah. And I'll do it if Tara asks me to get something. But other than that, I've never said that. I in only do it when it's a really super good deal. Yeah, because I just think, to me, it's kind of scammy if yeah. a place has so many rules that if you make one mistake, everything is not on sale. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, Elaine, Elaine says, I don't need cable. I have Tara. Oh, thanks. Well, good grief. We've got probably, what, 2,000 videos now at this point? So yep. you got plenty to watch. <laughs> <laughs> Marcy, I would love to see those comparisons. Yeah, that's on. That's what we're doing, actually, um, for videos coming up. So, uh, Kristen, haha, I haven't heard it. Get together, people. Yeah, get it together, people. <laughs> this spending $7 for bread instead of $1.39 is ridiculous. Wanda, I do like my Dawn bought store brand before, and it was lousy. So I'm going to be comparing that, actually, to see which one works best. <laughs> Everybody's talking about the Stanley Cup. I, like, I have my quick trip cup. I paid 50 cents last summer. And, I've been and it was full of drink last summer. <laughs> I've been drinking water out of it. And sometimes other things that I make at home for like a year. <laughs> we always laugh at Mike and his trip cups, but they're perfect. They're lightweight. They're sturdy. And if they start leaking or they break, just, throw it away. just get rid of it. Get another one. <laughs> Well, the other thing is in the summer, well, actually not in the summer, 
if you go if every now and then if I go in and get a drink at this place, they'll give you a whole lot less of a price if you have a cup already. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, Barbara, she says if she puts on weight, she chokes on her food. I think that's part of my problem. Yeah. So, um, Donna says she's a new viewer and really enjoying her channel, our channel. Thank you. Linda, wish Australia had the same prices for groceries as you do in the USA. Yeah, but you guys have nice weather. <laughs> well, I mean, you guys are an island. I get New Zealand and, and, and Australia all the time saying, I wish our, cheap, our prices were as cheap as you. That would be like saying Hawaii and Alaska should have as cheap of prices as us. You guys live in the middle of nowhere, literally. You have to have almost all of your food shipped in. It's no well, wonder your prices are expensive. So while it would be nice, but is it that's part of what living on an island means. Uh, I was so, just curious if the exchange rate makes it seem more of a problem than it is. Because I know with maybe. a lot of Canadian people, they hear us say something's $5. They're like, it's $7 here. Well, the Canadian the dollars are worth less. Same, yeah. So it's the same price for a lot of that stuff. I mean, you just got to, you could, you can't say, oh, I live in Hawaii and Alaska and I wish I had the same, you know, food prices as Kansas or if, whatever. If we say something is $5 good deal here in the U S that would be seven fifty in Australia as I'm looking at the ex current exchange rate. So if we say five dollars, cause, cause Australians and Canadians and Americans all use dollar, but they're um, not all the same dollar. Yeah. So if we say five dollars and it's seven fifty for you, then you're getting the same price that we're getting. Yeah. That's well, and we did a comparison and, with Canada, and their prices are not any more expensive than but ours. But it might it might be more expensive in Australia. Yeah. I just was wondering how much of the confusion is the fact that we're all saying dollars. Well, but I mean, it's an island. They have to have all the food. I know, in. but it's a big island. It's a huge continent. Know, but it's an island. <laughs> I'm sure they don't have that many farms there like we do here. I don't know if they have as many as here, but there's I think there's a lot of agriculture. Not in the I don't think center. they could support their whole country. I don't know. Tell us. Can you support your whole country? Do you know? Can your country support itself on all the farms you guys have? I don't know. Well, the I thought like a lot of it was like deserty. Well, the central portion is pretty deserty. But the east and west well, the east, east and west are on oceans. Yeah, but the East Coast has a lot of really nice areas. In the West Coast, I don't know. A, let us a thinner know. sliver of nice areas. Let us know. In the South. Know. Let us know. Let us know. I'm not an expert, though. So yeah. those of you in Australia, feel free to speak up. <laughs> Pat, yes, our planners are on sale in hard copy, 20% off right now. 400 pages, 366 days to help you get organized. Um, Cheryl, I made the slow cooked roast in volume one. It smelled so good. I was tempted to eat it for breakfast. Yes. I was doing a video, one, two and a half pound slow cooked roast. We got three meals for four people. Mike was very upset because I was making the third meal today. He was going to eat the leftovers. I'm like, no, that's a video. Mike eats leftovers. Yes. Unlike you. some people. I so I didn't need them to be repurposed, but the boys did. <laughs> <laughs> thank you well the boys would eat them too yeah but. i just love roast actually yeah. i like to take the roast and just put some pieces of it like put some of the shredded pieces on a tortilla and a few other things and make it a roast taco mm -hmm. it's really delicious yeah um michael put my other channel in there guys it's super easy recipes he will put it in there we have seventeen thousand, i think subscribers right now so you'll know that it's us does bacon grease need to be refrigerated? So I do refrigerate it, except for the, I have a little jar sitting on my stove that I keep out all the time. So it's not hard as a rock, but the rest of it goes in the refrigerator for me. Linda, we are thankful that Ollie is a great grocery store change for, for affordable grocery prices. Yes. Oh, and it's also available in most of Australia. Well, there you go. I guess I need to do a comparison on Australian grocery prices versus U.S. to see if they actually are more expensive. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they actually are. Ooh, Julie had her first grandchild Monday. Oh, that's great. Oh, congratulations. That is great. Linda, if I got money off every time things rang up wrong when checking out, I would go home free, free groceries every trip. I know. That's why Walmart stopped giving you the item for free if it rang up wrong. So now, literally every time I go to the grocery store, 
Well, not every time. 95% of the time I go, go, go to Walmart, it, something rings up wrong. EP, I tend to forget I have all the digitals, so I just order physical copies of the price book planner in volume one. Very good. Thank you. Doodle Toot has all three cookbooks and has given him those gifts. Thank you so much. Nancy, cookbooks make great wedding gifts and shower gifts. Sue, Thursday is a good day to shop. Stores aren't as crowded as weekends. Yep, you're right. EP, just subscribe to the recipe channel. Thank you so much. She didn't know it was a thing. Yes, I started it. I actually started it a couple of years ago, but with everything going on, moving and everything and and um all of that the remodel and everything i haven't really been able to get into it but i'm getting into it in 2024 we are gonna make a half a million subscribers by next january okay i don't do goals anymore so never mind but we're gonna work <laughs> on it yeah but sometimes we just throw something out there then i look back later and say hey that happened tracy did you identify the use of the temptations you showed on the videos and i did not so I had like, I don't know, probably 30 or 40 people send me links to the same exact dish, but no one said what the great big holes on the top were. Everybody thought it was for forcing bulbs and stuff like that, which really doesn't make sense since it's bakeware. I mean, it does look like a bulb forcing thing, but... It doesn't make sense since it's bakeware, but nobody could... Um, tell me what the big holes were. And so I was like, well, okay. Um, <laughs> I'm just gonna let it go, I guess, because I just, I could not figure out, I could not figure out what it was. Um, everybody sent me pictures of it for sale, but all it said was, um, how do I share this again? Let's see. I guess like that. And then you did the... Then I did the present. 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 Oops. I don't want to stop the screen. Oh, no. Did I just do something? Oh, no. Okay. Share screen. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Window. So here it is. So see those holes? Oops. I didn't do that right. See those holes there, guys? Did that make it bigger? Nobody can tell me what those holes on the top are for. The only thing I could think of is maybe hard boiling eggs in the oven. But it doesn't make sense that they would call it bakeware and then do bulb forcing. That just seems weird. But I don't know. So, no, I never did figure out what that was. I thought about actually emailing the company and asking them. Well, because <laughs> the, all the people that are selling them call them all different things that yeah. conflict with each other. Yeah. So yeah. obviously the people that are selling them don't all know what it, they are. Yeah. EP, does it show the names of what recipes are in each book online so you know which to get? Yes. On each of the sales pages, we have a flip through thing and you can see every single recipe in the book. All 1,200 recipes and tips in Dining on a Dime Volume 1, all 800 recipes and tips in Dining on a Dime Volume 2, and in Gluten-Free, Dairy-Free and our planner, guys, right here, you can see the whole thing. So even though thirty five percent off right now. So even though there's not a written list, if you look at that, you can mm -hmm. see every single page. Yep. Yep. Janice, I've had the no bake cheesecake from your recipe. It's easy and super delicious. That is my number one recipe on super easy recipes. That's my number one recipe. So thank you. I'm so glad you like it. Sheldon says they're for flower arrangements. I know. But that just seems weird. Maybe they're doing it for dual purpose or something. I don't know. Maybe it was supposed to match the bakeware and it's not actually bakeware. Well, it said bakeware on the bottom oh, of the thing. Oh, yeah, it does say that, doesn't it? So. We'll have to contact the company. We'll tell them. <laughs> yeah, 42,000 people are asking. <laughs> yeah. What is this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jay Moore says cheesecake partially frozen is good. Yay, very good. Nancy, Aldi had butter for $1.99. Ooh, man, that almost would have been worth the trip to Kansas. Laura, for singles, make no-bake cheesecake in muffin tins. Yes. And I think, I, I don't think I know, I have that recipe on Super Easy Recipes, too. Um, Rochelle, remember when people would hold up three fingers for Channel 3? Yes, I remember that. That was so funny. <laughs> she must be my age. Peggy says we're hilarious. 
<laughs> Are we hilarious? We like to think so. Wait, what? <laughs> We're being funny? Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> you darn tootin' won't believe we're funny. Yeah, but what kind of funny? That's the thing. <laughs> Peggy's eating out of her freezer and pantry for a couple of months. Good job. Shelda says our cookbooks are worth every penny. Thank you so much. And Joanne loves the cheesecake. And Peggy only eats out once a month. Yeah, we only eat out like three times a month for our date night. Now that now that our kids are old enough and we can actually go on date night. So like we never we went on a date night for our anniversary. Mom would watch the kids. And then once in a great while, Valentine's Day. But we never had date night growing up with the kids. We could not afford a babysitter for a long time. Then when we were finally getting better money, I wasn't about to just leave the kids with any neighbor kid that I didn't know. And um, mom would babysit like for doctor's visits and stuff. But we never... We never got to go out or anything like we didn't go on weekend trips or anything like that. Hardly once. I mean, we maybe did three or four or five times, like just a couple of days in 25 years. But in the last, what has it been? Three, four years, the kids are finally old enough that, um, that we can go out on date night. It's kind of nice, isn't it? Yep. So and they like it when we go and leave yeah. them home alone for a couple hours. Yeah. Yeah, they are. Um, Patty says, my three luxuries are getting my hair done every six weeks and massage therapy. Yes. And Patty, I don't know who you go to, but we I don't know somebody. if she's still there, but Sam at Cairo now on Main Street. I don't know if she's still at Cairo now or not, but Sam at Cairo now, she was she was last year only $70, I think, for an hour. Is it an hour and a half? I don't know. I can't remember. But Sam is really good. We love oh, I miss Sam. Yep. I really miss Sam. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. Let's just have a moment Actually, of silence for Sam. I think I might start crying. <laughs> Actually, I looked into places here for Tara since she has fibromyalgia. And uh, oh, thanks. You're welcome. And they were like four months out on their schedule, <laughs> thinking, wow. And I think the thing is that sometimes it takes a few to find the right one. So that rate, it would be more than a year before you'd figure out <laughs> who's going to actually do a good job. You do a good job. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, Teresa says, I watched her YouTube over and over and learned how to cut her own hair. Been doing it for years. Well, great. That is great. God, I am so glad. Uh, Jill says, so glad your ideas came back. Don't limit yourself and let the ideas flow. Well, the problem is with YouTube, you have to kind of be careful because if you're too all over the place, YouTube doesn't know what you're about and doesn't show your videos to people. So that's where our channel has totally screwed up. But anyway, it's a whole other story. Cookie says, I've been looking for the golden morning sunshine recipe for years. Mom used to make it when I was little and found it in our cookbook. She has the spiral down anniversary edition. Yes, that was uh, 25 year, 20, 20 year anniversary edition. Can you send me the next? Um... Yep. Wait, she says her massage therapist is in need. She's been going to her for eight years. What? There was somebody in town? There are a couple people that we tried in town. I wonder who who it was. Huh. Tell me who it was, Patty. I'm curious. If I tried her. Um, how old are our kids? I have 26, 25 next week and 20 and 14. How do you find out when, where garage sales are? Do you still have good luck with them these days? How often do you recommend going to thrift stores? So, um, as often as you possibly can. <laughs> I go to the thrift store every week just for the fun of it. You don't have to go that often or when I'm just looking for something. Um, yes, I have very good luck at garage sales. I went to a garage sale on Saturday, Friday, and I got $40 worth of stuff for $4. I'm going to have that in a video coming up. So, I mean, just where do I find garage sales? We have a thing called upcycle here. 
on Facebook page. It's a community page. And um don't know her. Hmm, no. And um it people will list on there, but there's also our newspaper has a garage sale page where people go and list. And then of course, just driving around looking for signs. Both well, Linda, depending on where you reside, Australia is a land of vast deserts, farming land, coastal beaches, towns, cities. We have six states and two territories that make up our beautiful country. Yes, but can your country support itself on your farming well, alone? Look at the next comment. Stephanie, yes, we produce enough to support Central Australia has cattle. There you go. Well, See, then I don't know why your prices are high. The thing is, in but American But they're a movies, socialist government, aren't they? Uh, I think there are some things that are socialist-like, but I'm not really sure it's socialist government. I don't know. You could answer that question for us, too. Because, like, Norway is technically not socialist, but a lot of their stuff is kind of socialist-like. Um, I think the thing with Australia is, in America, almost all the movies are about the outback. So everything looks kind of desolate in the movies. And when I started seeing from viewers, you know, who tell us where they live, I realized, wow, there's a lot of beautiful stuff there. Margaret says she saw a mom that had Uncrustables in Walmart last week for her nine-year-old. She had those Lunchables in her cart, too. Thought of Tara. Oh, my goodness. I have such a hard time keeping my mouth shut at Walmart when I see other people's grocery carts. When they're complaining about the price of food. I don't care if you're not complaining about the price of food, but if you're complaining about the price of food and you've got soda and pop tarts and all this stuff in your basket, pre-made meals, chips in the little baggies. Jim, seeing how excited the kids get over boxes from OCC is really eye-opening and how blessed they are. Yes, it is. Doodle toot. Hello, Tar and Mike. Thank you for your tips on stocking your pantry. When I first started listening to you a while ago, now things aren't on sale that I need i just shot my pantry very good Ra la la got a grinder attachment for christmas so we tried to grind some turkey that were on sale for 69 cents a pound we figured the ground meat comes about a dollar 80 a pound after we processed it did we do good yes you did that's great christine she's enjoying super easy recipes thank you so much jennifer we buy turkey around thanksgiving when they are cheap my husband cut them into pieces we package separately for the freezer when it comes to lunch meat good job um, Patty loves you. Oh, thank you, Patty. <laughs> Vicky, my husband had to have his esophagus straightened. He was choking and drinking when eating. Yeah. Yeah. Like I'm choking on toast now. I'm having a hard time just swallowing anything. Barbara, it's funny what cold is to different people depending on where you live. Yes, it is, isn't it? Chantel, idea. Please make a new book or ebook of smushified or pureed meals for choking issues and those of us going through dentro adventure. Well, the thing is, this is what I did with my kids when they were um, babies. I just took my immersion blender and stuck it in a can of peaches and zapped it and fed it to them. <laughs> yeah, so, that's pretty much I, all we yeah. had for baby food, right? Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Kathy says, I printed all the ebooks, put each in a page protector and binders. It really works well for me. I just wipe down the pages if they get spotted. Very good. Joanne, how much is gas in Wyoming? Let's see. It was $285, yes, $289 yesterday, I think. $289? Yeah. Which is the lowest it has been since someone came into office. And I will say, here in Sheridan, our gas is almost a dollar more than everywhere else in Wyoming <coughs> or Colorado. 75 cents to a dollar more. I went to Gillette and it was 75 cents cheaper. Yeah. Sheridan has the highest gas prices in Wyoming. And the weird thing is that it's... They make gas six six miles down the road. Well, some people would say, <laughs> oh, it's transportation. But the thing is, an hour and a half away in three different directions, it's like a dollar less. Yeah. So I think the transportation, I think there's something else going on there. Yeah. <laughs> Marilyn says three ninety nine for gas in Southern California. Well, yeah, California's always got high gas because you guys have crazy, ridiculous laws. Um, oh, but Connie says in Deadwood, South Dakota, it's three fifteen now. Yep, there you go. So wow. Deadwood's more expensive than we are. Uh, Alyssa, try rubbing castor oil on your neck. Breaks up lump bumps. Natural remedies. Looking to barbell nail. Hope your throat's get better. Thank you. 
Um, yeah, I'm getting my thyroid checked again for the millionth time tomorrow. I'm going in to get blood work again, but. Did you mention about uh, saving your chair? Saving my, oh yeah, Mike saved my chair. So one of my children who will remain nameless broke my favorite recliner over Christmas. Yes, I forgave them. Sort of. <laughs> I'm thinking about it, maybe. <laughs> But a spring broke, <clears throat> and um, I went all the way to Billings and got a new, not a new, new, but a new used Lazy Boy recliner, and it was too short for me. So I was like, oh, man, can we just fix my old one? So I got the spring. I was like, I don't know if this is going to work, but. I told Tara the price of the spring is cheap enough. Let's just try it and see. And? Well, Jack and I worked on it together, but we... <laughs> We watched this guy on YouTube and he took the entire chair apart down to wood. And Jack and I were like, we have to figure out a shortcut. So we were able to do it in about, how long did it take us? 45 minutes? About an hour. Yeah, 45 minutes. Yeah. We ended up finding, inventing a completely different way than he did. <laughs> sort of using some of the tips that we learned from seeing him do it. And yeah, Tar sat on it. And Thank you for saving my chair. It's like a whole new chair. Oh, what's funny new is, chair. What's funny is it's an old chair, but it's the only one that she's really liked the way it feels to sit on it. It's great. So amazing. what's funny is, so I'm taller from my waist. Well, you guys can see it as we're sitting here. So I'm taller from my waist to the top of my head, but Mike is taller from his hip down to his legs. Well, so certain chairs don't fit me right because I'm taller from the waist up. So, yeah. Patty's going to make our bread recipe and make two loaves of raisin bread right here. I owe Karen at the ReStore homemade bread. I told her I would bring it to her like six months ago, and we kept having something going on, so I got to make her some bread. <laughs> Heather, do you find a... Oh, wait. Uh, Vicky, we have a friend and his wife. We go out to dinner and split one meal. My husband and I tried that long, hard steak. We ordered the cowboy meal. He won't do it again because I, I accused him of eating more steak. <laughs> that's funny that's gonna be the next one um oh man that made me think about the cowboy cafe oh that yeah that was good yeah if yeah. you ever come to sheridan wyoming the cowboy cafe there you go they have some pretty amazing stuff okay let's see yeah guys all of those ones listed of that same container they're flower frogs and i know what a flower frog is i worked at a flower shop so I'm a florist, so I know what a flower frog is, but this is bakeware. That's what I can't figure out. So I don't know. Did they make a bakeware and a flower pot together? Maybe they did. I don't know. But those are awful big holes on the top. I don't know. For bakeware, it just seems weird. Valley of Badlands, we have date night once a week. We eat our dinner by candlelight. There you go. Watch a movie. That's the way to do it. Stephanie, we export a lot of from Australia and import a lot. Now, see, that doesn't make sense to me. Why do you ship it all out to bring it all in? Because you ship out things that you make and ship in things that you don't make in your country. Yeah, except that when you go and look, it's like they shipped out chicken to Canada or to China to be canned, and then they ship it back to the United States. It's ridiculous. I know. Well, that's the U.S. We're kind of backwards. Don't get me started. <laughs> um, Renee, didn't I make a video on toilet tissue? Yes, we did. And it was one of our funnier ones, wasn't it? What if was you it? click on the live, it's the TP comparison. I think we did it last January was our newest one. Yeah. Um... Uh, sure, I'll talk about it. Let's just get controversial, shall we? I know this is off topic. But what do you think about the people still locked up for January 6th event? Have and they haven't been charged yet? I think it's the total scam, total scam, totally it's illegal, a totally fabricated thing. And those people should be suing the government out the wazoo. Although I know it's the government keeping in them in there, but this whole thing about them being white supremacists and all that hello, it's an old white guy who's been 
in Congress for what, 50 years, 40 years? How long has he been in our government? You mean that's now? That's now president that won. How is that white supremacy? That makes absolutely no sense. So stupid. Well, it's just it's a political like ploy, ploy because they're scared that if the Trump gets in, he's going to actually make changes. Well, if you actually saw the live video that was happening that day, it was there was nothing. It was a bunch of absolutely goofy people nothing. in costumes, like a cosplay, being escorted around by Capitol Police, like tour guides. And then you see that they spin it into something completely different. Ridiculous. That's why it's important to know. Like it's kind of like a lot of the stuff about um, September 11th. You know, if you actually watch the live video, if you watch the video while it was happening at the time, what you see in the replays now is not the same. And partly that's because some of it was pretty awful, <laughs> but some of it is just to change your perspective of what happened there. And the same thing is with January 6th is completely fabricated. <laughs> like that's, it's ridiculous. Especially when you take a look at 2020 and all the people gathering together and firebombing government buildings and things. And, and that's fine. That's nothing like that at all. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's completely, that's it's why fine I say for people to be burning down cities and looting and all this. But some people are being escorted through the Capitol building, and we call that an insurrection. That's ridiculous. Well, and this is one thing I would say on that, having been a television guy for 20 years, you have to be really careful not to get your information from what you see in video because it's so easy to manipulate people. Like, there were one or two things that they got on video that they play over and over again and make it look like that was everything. It, I think I've told the story before, but when I was in television... I worked at a university. Uh, we were home. I was. I, I worked two hours from home. Jonathan! So we were home for the weekend. I was home for the weekend. And the Seattle News had this, oh, the big Pullman riots at the university where I was. So I went there on Monday and asked my friends. And they were like, what riots? I was like, yeah, the news had it. And they said, oh, that was, that was a frat party couple of guys got drunk and started fighting and people gathered around and were yelling, fight, fight, fight. And then a few other people set a dumpster on fire and broke a window. And the news made it look like the Watts riots in LA. And I was thinking that's the same thing that's happened with this. So anyway, yeah, uh, I would say anytime something like that happens, don't just listen to what people say about it. Like actually look and see what, what information is out there. It's kind of the same way with all the stuff that's happening with Israel right now. All these crazy nut job people going out there rioting and stuff and supporting the terrorists. <laughs> like, you people are completely manipulated. Yeah. Somebody asked about gluten-free recipes. Grab my cookbook, gluten-free, dairy-free. It's 35% off right now, and you will have recipes. Every recipe works, and it tastes good. So if you're just starting gluten-free, that, um, that is a great way to start. Melissa, hi from Dallas, Texas. Just ordered volume one and two. And the I think she means the planner. So excited to start saving. Thank you so much for ordering. Thank you guys for ordering. We really appreciate you supporting our small business. Thank you so much. Peggy, my daughter treated me to a massage for my birthday, but it made my her muscles hurt real bad. It can. What happens is the lactic acid builds up in your muscles and it can hurt really bad, but I feel better later. It hurts like the dickens when I'm there, but later I feel so much better. So that's why I get it done. Susan, swallow study might help determine what it is. Yes. Um, Lisa thinks it's funny when I break into song. That's funny. Jonathan, wow. how are you, my friend? Jonathan, he's on here. Hey, Jonathan. I hope the house. Hope you're thing loving is your new right. place. Yes. Um, yeah, Ellen, follow Amir Safate for the truth in Israel. Yes, we love Amir. We have been watching him for oh my goodness, like 10, 10 12 years now—a really long time. Um. <clears throat> But some of it lately has been hard to watch because it's unfiltered. Yeah. yeah. 
Um, okay, let's see. Kelly says, my customer is a truck driver and was there. He has video with his own phone of bus of people being dropped off. All the people that intruded on the Capitol. I know it's a farce and I feel so far sorry for those people in jail. Um, I mean, you know, well, it's just crazy that people, this is kind of like when you, when the person asked about butter, about Eric and Goshen says this, and we says this, who to believe. So basically it's all about optics and public opinion and what do people, what do the majority of people appear to think? And the media can make you think that the majority of people believe something and it's not what they believe. But just even if the majority of people believe something doesn't make it true. <laughs> and that's, that's the thing that's so bizarre about a lot of this is that the culture has come to just look at if enough people yell loud enough, then they must be right. Yeah. <laughs> and that's totally not realistic. And I think that's unfortunately a big failure in our education system. But guys, we're at the end of time. I'm sorry, but we are. You know, Jesus Christ is going to be coming back soon to get us. The Bible has already told us that we are going to be hearing of wars and rumors of wars. And we're going to have be having economic problems and that men are going to be lovers of men and women lovers of women. And we already know all of this is going to happen. It's happening before our eyes. And so even when I feel really bad for these people that get stuck and get... Um, in prison for stuff like this. And, you know, I hope they can get out because it's just wrong. But we also know as Christians that this is what is going to be happening. And so, you know what? You need to put your faith in Christ as your Lord and Savior. And then you don't need to worry about it because we know that He is the one that is in control that God is going to make sure that he takes care of his children. We are not all children of God. We are only children of God if we, if we have, ex have accepted Jesus as our Lord and Savior. Otherwise, we're just a creation of God. And so God has promised to take care of his children. So, you know, Jesus is coming back soon. And I can't wait, personally. <laughs> I'm ready. Come, Lord Jesus, come. But... Aranatha. You know, um, but God is in control. He knows what's happening. God is the one who has put the people in office that are in office. So while I don't agree with it, neither did Daniel. Neither did Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Neither did, um, who else? Well, Herod was a bad dude when Jesus was born. So all these people are put into office by God. And so we just need to hang strong and just know that he is in control. So, you know, just keep moving forward and doing what you can. So, okay. So we, we had some requests that we open up the rest of our gift from the lady in England that sent us this cute little gift basket. <laughs> And so I waited and I didn't open it because I had several people want me to open it online or on the show. So she had this inside of there also. I opened it up. It says, Tara, for when it hits the... <laughs> oh, dear. So I can just imagine... <laughs> Oh, so when the fecal game. matter hits the oscillation unit, and look at that. Oh, my goodness. It's an itty-bitty thing of toilet paper. <laughs> so I don't know if she knows this or not, but I used to have a dollhouse. This makes me want to get another dollhouse. I loved doing the dollhouse. When I first got sick with my CFS and fibromyalgia, I got a dollhouse kit like a year or two before that, and I just never had a chance to get it put together. And I started putting it together to entertain me while um, while I was not feeling good. And then, so I, I started opening this, and then I saw the comments. So you guys saw this one. It's a little garden tool box. And look at all the little garden tools in that. Isn't that cute? Oops. <laughs> 
And then she got me this little teensy tiny flower picture. Look at that one. That flower picture is amazing. Isn't that cute? Now, I did open those ones, but I didn't look at them all. Then, look at what she I got me. The flower picture. Is it in focus? Yep. That's amazing. Then she got me from Tesco this little gnome bag. <laughs> that is so cute. Okay, so then the rest of this I haven't opened yet. So... And Tara had to comment on shopping at Tesco too, because I love Tesco. That was our, one of our oh, look. Places when we were there. A little gingerbread. Oh, that is too cute to go with the Christmas decorations. Ah, this is so sweet. Look at this one. Oh my goodness, is that not so stinking cute? Ah, okay, that one's going in a frame. <laughs> And that one's going in a frame, and that one's going to be up all year long. It's not. It looks Christmassy, but it's actually just flowers. Well, I guess that's poinsettias. Well, that doesn't matter. It's going up all year. Oh, my goodness. That is too cute. Okay. And then those came in this cute little gnome bag. <laughs> so then, let's see. What else does she have? My goodness, she absolutely stuffed these full. And Mike and the boys got a package. It came on Saturday. <laughs> Little known treat bags. It must have taken forever. Oh my to goodness. Do this. I don't this know is, how long she spent so wrapping this stuff. This is like because there's so, so many cool. like a lot of like tiny presents, which is which is kind of cool, but where you're sending them across the pond. <laughs> Snome cake toppers. Can you guys see that? Isn't that cute? Wow. Oh my goodness. And then it's like the gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> yeah, wow. Oh, that's so cute. Look at it. I don't oh know my where goodness. these things came from. I don't know. She maybe she I don't know. Well maybe she just found them at different places. Wow. See what this one is. Oh, it's snowman on this. Uh huh. On the. Isn't that cute? Apron. Oh my goodness, a gnome poster set. <laughs> oh my goodness, she made sure that I am set with gnome. Oh my goodness, thank you so much. This is so much fun. Okay. Oh. Oh, oh, it's dropping out. Oops. Oh, my goodness. How cute is this? <gasps> oh, look at she has a little basket here and it's got all these little cookbooks. Wow. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That is so cool. Here, let me see if I, I don't know if you can see it. Oh, my goodness. These are so cute. Let's see. Can you see that? Uh, I don't know if you can see that. And then look at this. Oops. Oops, I dropped it. Hold on. Here's another one. Look at that side with all the cute little foods. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, my goodness. That is too cute. Okay, let's see what else she's got here. Oops, here's something little teensy tiny. Wow, you took forever to wrap all this stuff. Oh, my. Oh, look. <laughs> It's a little box of biscuits. Isn't that cute? Oh Wait, my biscuit goodness! Biscuit biscuits or, or biscuits? Just, well, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Biscuits. Okay, let's see what the next one is. And she wrapped them all with this cute little string. Oh my goodness! This is so much fun. Okay, let's see what this one is. Ah! What does it say on it? Home, home sweet, sweet home. home. <laughs> okay, I'm going to have to get a dollhouse now again. I loved my dollhouse. I got rid of it because we didn't have space for it. And Ellie didn't want it when she was a kid, so I sold it. But I loved my dollhouse. Amazing Grace Ranch said Dollar Tree has some cute gnomes out for Valentine's. Day. Oh, do they? I'll have to I go have check. To check what is it? Oh, it's making noise. <gasps> oh, it's a little Christmas box. 
It's playing Me Wishing oh, Merry Christmas. Oh, it has little nose. nose. Whoops. <laughs> look at how cute is that. And look, it's even got gnomes on the side. Whoops, where is it? Uh, or Santa on the side. Oh my goodness, that is too cute. Yeah, I might have to do a shadow box. That's a great idea. Let's see. Okay, here's another little teeny tiny one. Yeah, I might do a shadow box. That's a great idea. I have a shadow box I haven't used yet. That's a that's a good. I just I don't know. I just love all the little miniature things. Oops, oops, oh, oh, I dropped something. Oh, what did I drop? Oh my goodness, that's too cute. Can you reach it right there? What is it? Oh, it's a little frying pan with an egg in it. Oh my goodness. Perfect for tonight's cute. show. <laughs> Look at it's a little butter dish and a little frying pan. Oh my word. This is so cute. And then I think I showed this one. <laughs> oh, this is so much fun. Okay, hold on. Let's see what the next one is. Oh, a little vintage Christmas tree card. <laughs> Oh, I'm going to have to do a shadow box. Ooh, look at this one's all fancy. Oh, my. <laughs> oh, how cute. Oh, my goodness. It's a whole baking. Oh, that is too cute. It's like a tabletop with. Oh, my goodness. Look, it's got the flour and the milk and the butter and the eggs and everything. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> okay, let's see what else. I think I got one, two more things. Hold on, let's see. Okay, I got this cute little bag. An olive wood holding cross. Uh-oh. Oh, it's got lots of things in here. Hold on. Okay. Oh, cool. Oh, look, it's a little pocket type cross thing. That's pretty neat. Oh my. And what's this? <laughs> Is this? <gasps> oh wow. It's a little mini Bible. Look at this. Oh my. Let's see. Can I actually read anything in here? No, I can't read anything oh. in here. Well, obviously, I, can I can't see read it. Champ but... Chapter. Oh my goodness. Oh, that is too cute. It's a little mini Bible. Well, one of the boys opened one and it had a little Bible like this and he was able to sort of see it. But wow. Yeah. Wow. There was a day when I had a little Bible that was bigger than this. And even as a kid, it was a little hard to read. But it's funny because it, it does this appear so to be fun. the whole thing. <laughs> that is too cool. Okay. So now... Let me see. Oh, it's a little salt crock. Oops. Look at that little tiny salt crock. Oh my goodness. Everybody's This is it. too much fun. Okay. And here's the last little basket right here. Or last little bag here. Oh my, there's lots of things in here. Let's see. Wow. You spent so much time say, on wow. this. Oh. Thank you so much. Just how long it took to put it together is very thoughtful. And she did one for each of us. She did a big ba basket for <gasps> mom and I. Oh my oh, goodness. Mini miniature china. Look at this. A little miniature. And there's two plates. And a little teacup. Oh my <laughs> goodness, how cute. Okay, let's, oh my goodness. My English breakfast. Oh, and it's twining. <laughs> my favorite. Oh, that's funny. Okay, she's still got more stuff in here. Oh my goodness. Whoops. What else does she have? Let's see. She's got, oh, this is funny. She's got Yorkshire tea, little miniature Yorkshire tea. Wow. And a Thai food tea. I love all of these and PG 
and twinings, a little mini twinings. We've had all this tea. I've had all of these typhoon. I love them. Oh my goodness, this is too fun. Okay, here's the last little thing I think. Actually, one thing Tara loved about England was tea, lots and lots of tea. I did love English tea. Oh my and goodness. Our friend Crystal would make us the tea. That was, she made good tea. She made really good tea. <gasps> oh my goodness, how cute is that? Look at this to go with my tea, guys. <sighs> Oh, oh, oh. oh thank you pie. so much. Oh my goodness. Do you want to open yours real quick? Well, I don't oh. know about real quick, but oh my goodness, this is so much fun. Thank you. Okay, I'm gonna put all of these in here. I'll watch the comments real quick while you open yours. Uh okay. what do we think our normal live video days will be this year? Normally, probably Wednesday. Probably just Wednesday. Yeah. But uh, but every so often we'll do, you know. A week or two of when we have sales we've been doing them for the sales almost every day Wait, so was this one it part of this or was this the separate this one? was it was in here yeah that was in there that oh, was in there okay yeah wow oh my <laughs> ah she worked so hard on it thank you so much i know oh i'm just seeing well and i love the little flowers and i was amazed at how you packed it because it was uh they were kind of packed in a massive amount of bubble wrap and other stuff i thought it was like a blanket or something the way it was wrapped it was wrapped like it was a big blanket but coming from england over to here was probably the best way to do it especially oh, yeah. with a basket like that because i know like with she did our, a great job our books and stuff they just toss them the post office just tosses them into a big bin and if these were on the bottom of that <laughs> Oh, how cute. That is really cute. Oh, we're going to frame those. <laughs> oh, that is super cute. Oh, I love those vintage things. Wow. Yeah. That's oh, really my awesome. goodness. Wow. There are lots of these that are wrapped up like squirrel. Well, actually, like these two. <laughs> wow. I almost hate to undo the string because it's really pretty. Look how she tied the string. I know. <laughs> ah. <laughs> wow. Yeah, this oh, this is so cool. I did Whoa. I did like England over there. I mean, it was fun. Oh, Christmas drinks bar. There you go. Oh, that is cute. Okay, I'm making I'm making that frames. That is so cool. I'm making frames for those. Yeah, Tara loves to take stuff like this and frame yeah. it. Wow. Linda says our boys have tiny Bibles about the half size of a baseball card. Oh, very interesting. <laughs> Show you guys the yeah, Kim. I'll have to show you the shuttle box. <laughs> oh, she sent us a musical card. A musical card. Let's see what's the card look like. Oh, that's pretty. That looks English, doesn't it? Oh, uh, I wonder if she cares if we say, well, I mean, truly we could say startlet. From because, Natalie, I think. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Man, you worked so hard on this. I Thank know. you so much. This is really amazing. Yeah, Ooh. the baby teapot is too cute. <laughs> I gotta, I gotta be careful. I didn't miss anything here. Ooh. <laughs> Snow White magic snow with shovel. <laughs> oh, cute. <laughs> it oh, says, that's funny. It says, build a miniature snowman, just like real snow, just add water. <laughs> Grows 600%. Oh, my Whoa. goodness. We should try that, that on the show. Cool. That is cool. We should funny. try that on the show. Oh, that would be hilarious. That would be so hilarious. <laughs> okay, let's see. Wow. There are lots of little things like this. <clears throat> Ooh, I hear something rattling in there. <gasps> this is really, really cool. So Tara had, and the, Tara had this as well in hers. It's like a little. So it's olive wood, she said. It's an olive wood, little round wooden, or a little rounded edges wooden cross. It's really cool. Hmm. Let's see. I think it's just a card explaining what it is. Oh, yep. Yeah. There's some other stuff in here, too. Ooh. It's funny, because look at how. I know. She wrapped everything. She wrapped all these little gifts, like. It's hard to see because the camera doesn't want to focus because it's so small, but they're all individually wrapped. 
They must have taken forever, Natalie. Thank you. Lana, hello. Oh, this is the little mini Bible. <laughs> kind of like Tara's. <laughs> oh, that's too funny. What's funny is I was looking in the one that Tara has, and it appears that it is probably the whole text, <laughs> which is shocking because the one I have is like this big. <laughs> So you know what I should do? Look at this pretty paper she sent it in. I should save the paper and make the back of the shadow box this. Oh, that would be really that would be cool. cool. Do I need to be being more careful about opening this? Ah, I can't figure out where yeah. the ends are. Here's another little one. See, it's like Christmas. It just keeps on I getting. I know. Wow. This is more Christmas than all have. the rest of the Christmas combined. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what's this? This is cool looking. It's like a bucket and oh, it's an ice cream maker. <laughs> so here, oh see if I can goodness. put it together. That's too cute. It's well, it's it's more than one piece, but <laughs> that's cute. It's like a dollhouse sized little ice cream maker. <laughs> oh my goodness. That's really cool. Yeah, hmm. look at this big piece. Can you see how cute that paper is? Oh, this one has strings and tape. <laughs> I know, Kimberly. I'm all if I well, I might do a shadow box, but if I don't do the shadow box, I'm gonna put it on my sink where my ledge is for my new window. Oh, how fun! What's this one? Oh, oh, it's an ice cream kit. Oh, it's a whole so there's one was the ice cream maker. This was the <laughs> ice cream maker, <laughs> and then this is all kinds of ice cream cones and and dishes ice cream, of ice dishes cream. of ice cream. Oh, that's to funny. With it. That's too cute. That is really cool. Oh my goodness. And a little spoon. Oh, and an ice cream scoop. <laughs> oh, and it all sits. Oh, it all sits on a little thing here. Um Here, wow. let me see if I can. This one's a bunch of Well, I don't know if I can get it open. This is a bunch of uh, little signs and things, or advertising type signs for all these different kinds of ice creams and things. So, like if you built a miniature ice cream, um, little miniature ice cream shop, shop, this would be great for that. Oh my gosh, that's funny. Here's one that has all the different kinds. Like, it's hard to see. See, she heard that you like ice cream. <laughs> yes, I do. I miss it greatly. Some of the brands, I was wondering if these are UK brands. Yeah, they're all UK brands. That's <laughs> funny. Did we have ice cream in there? Oh, yeah, we did. Well, at Hyde Park, we had some. Yeah, it was good. It was really good. Oh, I forgot. Uh, well, it was mostly in Ireland where they had the, um, I forgot what they called it, the flake the chocolate. Did they have that at Hyde Park, too? Yeah. <laughs> Here. Okay, so... Tiny little here. Sorry. I, so this one is a. This is all wrapped. This is a wrapped present right here. <laughs> and I was already starting to unveil it, but I just wanted to show you how small it was. Oops. Uh. <laughs> wow. A little. It's a Star Trek annual. It's a little. It's a little mini book. A Star Trek book. <laughs> Goodness, that's hilarious. That's so you. <laughs> it is, oh and it's gosh, like the 1960s Star Trek. That is See, really cool. Look at the little ice cream stand. Isn't that cute? Wow. Oh my goodness, that's too cute. There's more, <laughs> but wait, there's more. Oh wait, I didn't see this. I'm gonna put this bag down so the stuff that's, that's already open can go back into it for now. Oh, there are more little books. You sure you want me to open all this on the show? Well, you only got three or four left. Are you kidding? There's like four right here that doesn't include this or oh this. My. <laughs> sure, go ahead. It's all right. <laughs> Any good commentary going on? Do you guys it? want us to keep going? I know. That was so nice of her, Lana, wasn't it? Oh, uh, a lucky, six, uh, lucky sixpence for your pudding. Is this for the Christmas pudding? Oh, that's the cool. one that you put in there that you somebody has to find it. Yeah, it must be. There. 
Wait, explains on the back. <laughs> Do not place the coin in a microwave oven. <laughs> oh my goodness. So, that yeah. is really cool. <laughs> oh, that's cute. Yeah, because it seems like I think that they, I think there was a six, a six P piece in there and you were supposed to, the person who found it was, it was a good luck. A good luck or something. Yeah. Hmm. So here's another one. Okay, we'll keep going, guys. Dun, 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 dun. We wish you a Merry Christmas. <gasps> we wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. <gasps> Rose <Rose> happy... Ballad. <laughs> it just ruined Christmas. It's a little sleigh. Oh, that's <laughs> Or a little sled. Yeah, a little sled. With, Ooh, with it's a gotta... little bag of with a chicken in it and a book and a fire hydrant. Oh, that's funny. Oh, a little fire extinguisher with a sign, how to use a fire extinguisher. And then it's got this little, like, uh, furry, what do you call that? Uh, like a, like a, like an animal skin yeah. kind of thing on there. That is really cool. Olympia says, does she have store miniatures? I don't know. Well, that's what I was wondering, because this is a lot of miniature stuff. Susan of... says, we did dimes and silver foil in Christmas pudding. Well, there you go. She must be from England, so they must have done, they must do that in England. Because we huh. were always curious about making a Christmas pudding just to see. Although then some people said it wasn't as good as it looks in the movies. So yeah. We weren't sure. I keep wanting to make figgy pudding and plum pudding. I always think that would be fun to do. Because I like fruitcake. But I don't know. Ooh, ooh. Oops. Oh, dear. Oh, did you get it? Oh. This, is, this was all good, right? I think so. <laughs> yeah. So this one, this one is a little... A little coffee cup. Oh my goodness. Can you even see it? Like a mocha something. It's a little that. coffee cup with a, is it a mocha or with, an ice cream? With Ooh, it's... whipped cream and a car or on a chocolate on. Oh, I think it's hot chocolate with whipped cream and chocolate sprinkles and a little chocolate bar on top. This oh one wasn't a little gift bag, a little mini gift bag. Oh my goodness. And then it's goodness. wrapped inside How of the mini gift bag. How long did this take? That was so nice. Lucky hiking, she wrote. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Do they have, do they do Boxing Day the day after Christmas? Not here in the U.S. Susan says, my mom and grandparents came from England in the 60s. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Oof. Lisa says, my nanny was English. She's 63. Or she, I mean, Lisa's 63. <laughs> That's why I'm having a little struggle opening. Because you're 63? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, now I'm getting it open. Dun, 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 dun. Oh my goodness. Oh. <laughs> That's hilarious. So it's a little pair of hiking, hiking boots. boots. Oh my goodness. That is funny. That is really cool. Wow. Wow. You sure know a lot about us. I know. <laughs> like, she listens, doesn't I'm she? I'm amazed. Yeah. You I'm watch amazed. every she must watch every show. Wow. That's funny. That is really cool. Okay, next time we go to England, I don't think my we'll kids have to know meet this up. Much about me. <laughs> Our kids never listen to us. Wow. Uh, are we the only ones whose kids don't listen to them? <laughs> Type one for yes and two for yes. <laughs> oh, yay. Is it Earl Grey? It's Twining's Earl Grey. Oh, that's funny. Oh, come on, focus. Oh, Hold back. Focus. There. Uh, now you can see it. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Yeah, that's my favorite tea. So, and that's my favorite brand. Although, I guess the other one, what was the other one that was in the blue package? That one's actually pretty good too. The Earl, the organic Earl Grey? Yeah, but it, it's another, I guess it's another Carney English company. And Sons. Yeah. Yeah. That one's turned out to be good too. Yeah. Susan says, My brother was born in England. I wasn't. He said that I'm not English, but I am. If your parents were English, you're English. That's funny. <laughs> Especially if they taught you to speak. <laughs> oh, here's another. It's another plate of. Is it cupcakes? cupcakes. Yeah. Or some, that is yeah. Really cool. I wish you could see. It's like got powdered sugar yeah, and a little. See. It's got powdered sugar and a little. Um, like a leaf on the top. Yeah, a little holly leaf. Isn't that cute? Oh my goodness. And there's another little book here. So wow. Oh, this was so much fun. 
chocolate oh, this is Cadbury. Cadbury. <laughs> it's, a, it's a package of chocolate Cadbury. And the Cadbury in the UK is oh, way it is good. better than the Cadbury yeah. in the US. It's super good. It was really good. Yeah. How many Bibles were given away this year? Um, well, let me see. We did... Um, They're not... 2,000. We shipped more than 2,000. No. It was I, like three or 4,000, I think. Hold on a sec. Do I have a... Connie, since you like fruitcake, do you ever make fruitcake cookies? I used to. I haven't anymore, but yes, they are really good. And I love the stolen type bread where it's the bread. Oh, I love that so much with the bread and the fruit cake and the nut or the fruit and the nuts. Ooh, I love that one. Uh, 2,700. Wreath, yeah. Yep. That's not what you, you had, yep. but you had a lesser number, right? Well, I just estimated. But. Some of them aren't in the store. Some of them we ship. Larissa, well, the bread recipe from the gluten-free cookbook work in a bread machine? I don't know. I haven't oh. tested it yet. I need to test it. Oh, oh cool. Paddington Christmas bubble. <laughs> oh, that's cute. Wow. Oh, that's so cute. We'll have to put that on the tree next year. That is really cool. Oh, wow. And he's, he's bringing parcels to the mailbox and writing a letter to Santa. And, oh, that's really cool. <laughs> nice. I think... Is that it? I think that's it. Oh, I might thank find you. some more small ones, so I'm going to oh have to Oh, my sure. goodness. We had several people ask us to open that, so I thought that might be fun. That oh, was so wonderful. Oh, Merry thank Christmas you, to us. See, we got to extend our Christmas this year. Yes. And the kids, the kids did get theirs, and they loved it. Thank you so much. Yes. It is really cute that she, Kathy says, I think it's cute. She wrapped everything really exciting that way. It makes you really yeah. dig for the goodies. Yeah. I know. And I was really surprised at how, how much work she went she to, to put it, it together, this. but it was so beautiful. Yeah. So, I mean, it's just, And I looked at you. your one of the flowers. I'm really surprised at those flowers. Yep. And she got me a little gnome on the side of the basket there. Can you see the little gnome guy? And but I'm she got some pretty flowers. But the flowers and... would survive being yep. shipped. I know. Like that. Well, she had it packed really good. I know. I was impressed with the packing. I mean, so, we pack a lot of stuff, but it's. So one of you guys is going to be getting the packing material from her. Because <laughs> yeah. we can reuse all our packing material. <laughs> So, Irene, thank you for your Bible ministry. You are welcome. You're yes, welcome. we do give away free Bibles. If you guys need a Bible, please go grab one. Mike will put the link right. in for you. And just if you can't afford a Bible, please use the coupon. I'm sorry, guys. I have not been sleeping well at all today. And, or at all. And so I'm very tired today. We, um, I went in to go get hormones today and Mike and I are going to do a little video on that. <laughs> Cause Mike started popping jokes about it. So. <laughs> We're going to go do a video about that. Uh, on the yeah. Bible thing we do, uh, generally we ask that, um, uh, that you request one free because we'll get some people that will try to, they used to ask for like 50 or something like that, a big number. Um, and other people have tried to, you know, create a lot of different accounts to get a bunch of different ones free. So if it turns out that a person, you actually need more than one free, because what we ask is for, if you're giving them as gifts or something, then uh, we also sell them at our cost. So we don't make any profit on it, but it's not very expensive, but there are some people who um, I'll say, I'll just send a message saying, Hey, I noticed you were trying to get multiple ones free. If you tell me what the scoop is here, cause we get a lot of scammers that try to get a lot of them for purposes that aren't what we intend them for. <laughs> so, so anyway, yeah. So if there's some reason you would need more than one, then email, email us, us and ask us, cause we do give to ministries and stuff like that, that, because like, need help, but um, we've had like a couple of prison ministries where it's like one or two people that just basically decided they're going to be a prison ministry and they actually devote time like missionaries and go into prisons. We've sent them stuff, and we've various other people who have some sort of kind of organization like that. We've helped out with those. So, mm -hmm. 
Uh, but for that, we just ask that if if that's you, that you email us. Don't don't try to get around the Guys, store. <laughs> we know the scammers now, and we can tell when we're when it when they're doing scamming. So we just delete those extra orders. Uh, we delete all the orders. So. Pat, I have CFS and fibromyalgia. When you get tired, your my eyes get blurry. Does this happen to you? Yes, it does. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Tori says now we're buffering again. When we were talking about one six, we were buffering, and now we're buffering again about talking about Bibles. Not surprised. No, I don't think it's a coincidence. Big surprise. Big surprise. Um, Karen says the Bible she got from us. Or gifts were delightfully accepted. Hey, so glad. Lana, and thank you for turning me to Jack Hibbs. Love his ministry. Yes, we love Pastor Jack. Marilyn, the Bible we give out is the New Living Translation because it is easy for people to read and understand if they have never read the Bible before. And so that is the version that we give. And um, if you've ever, if you, if you're out there and you're thinking, man, I tried to read it. My Bible it was just so difficult. I couldn't possibly get into it. And it was really frustrating. The reason we send this version is because it's much easier to understand. So, yeah. 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 Everybody's loving Pastor Jack. All right, guys, don't forget our New Year's sale 35% off for our print books, 50% off our ebooks. It ends on Friday. So, the last couple of days we've got, we will be back on Wednesday. Thank you for joining us. Have a good night, and we will see you guys next time. Bye.